Now you see all these YouTubers, right? They're buying the cheapest versions of cars on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or whatever platform they choose, right? And it all seems very glamorous, okay? I fell victim to this, all right? Believe me. I mean, if you guys have been around long enough, you'd know that this, this very car has grown my YouTube channel significantly. And it's been a blessing and it's been a curse at the same time. This EFXR6 was the cheapest EFXR6 on Facebook Marketplace at the time. I'm gonna go over five things you should consider before buying the cheapest version of a car on Facebook Marketplace. Now, the first thing you need to consider is that buying the cheapest car isn't always gonna be the best solution because this, for instance, was $3,000 cash. <laughs> cash, all right? A decent condition version of one of these cars was about double, maybe two and a half times more expensive than this one here. For that reason, I bought this car. Now that's all well and good, but this brings me onto my first point. You seriously need to consider roughly all the costs that are going to be associated with getting a shit ape like this and turning it into a decent condition version of the car you're buying. When you're buying on Facebook Marketplace, people are a little bit shady. They're not going to disclose a few things to you. And this is what happened to me. So actually getting the car started was pretty cheap. All I had to do was buy a belt, buy some sealant, you know, put some put a few bolts on, stuff like that. Pay for Ollie's dinner a few times because he actually knows what he's doing with these cars. Then came the problem of actually moving the car because it is a car, believe it or not, at the end of the day. So you kind of want it to move. This car would not go into first gear because the old T5 transmission was shafted. This is the state of the old T5. I took it apart and it sits like that next to the other pile of junk. So things that you assume are going to be cheap aren't always right. Never assume, always plan for the worst. The next point I need to move on to is cleaning the car because oftentimes when you're buying the cheapest version of a car, it would have sat around for a long time. The person that's selling the car obviously doesn't care about it. I mean, it's cheap. If they cared about it, they'd fix it and they'd sell it for a decent price. For instance, the guy that I bought this off could not give a f about it. Hence why it was sitting in a field, hence why the motor wasn't together, hence why there were rats living in the car, and so on and so on. Because of this, everything is going to be neglected, and sometimes it's an actual biohazard, like this car was. So the first thing, and I cannot recommend this enough, please clean the car. Clean it inside, clean it outside, pressure wash the engine bay, make sure it's all clean. Make sure that when you're working on it, you're not going to turn a different color, like you're going to turn blue or blue. You're already going to be hating life working on the car. You want to make your life a little bit easier, so clean the car. I had my good friend, Matt, from Meticulous Auto Detailing come in and he detailed the whole inside of the car. The plan was to detail the outside of the car as well, but we ran out of time. That will be coming at a later date when the car actually has four wheels on it. Now, after you've cleaned the car, it's going to be clean enough where you can actually see all the problems that the car has. When I cleaned the car, I found that it had a few rust spots, just to name one thing, right? When the car's clean, it reveals a lot of hidden secrets, a lot of hidden Easter eggs that you might not have found on the car previously when it was dirty. The main problems that this car had with being dirty and not knowing what was wrong with it was the engine. When I bought the car, I had a look at the engine. I'm like, it's a Ford. It's gonna leak oil, obviously. When I cleaned the car, cleaned the whole engine and stuff like that, started driving it around, I found out that it was easier to list the oils that it didn't leak than the oils that it did leak because there were none. Everything leaked. Coolant, AC gas, oil, power steering fluid, transmission fluid, diff oil, everything leaked. And that's when you start making up a list of parts. So like I said, the transmission didn't shift. So that was the number one thing I had to buy. That was the biggest cost of this build so far. I slapped it in and it was selecting all gears, which was min. I started making up a list of all the parts that the engine needed. I always had in mind that I was going to boost the motor that was in it. It was a sock. It was a factory Tickford optioned sock. Pull the top end off, reseal it, put a new head gasket in it, put some head studs in it. You know, Bob's your uncle is going to be all good. When I started taking the engine apart, it revealed some things that I wasn't too happy with. Hence why everything is out of bay in this thing, including the subframe, which if you haven't been following, I've been putting an AU subframe in this thing. Now, 
this brings me on to one of my final points. You gotta remember the reason why you bought the car and put all your emotions aside, right? We're talking finance only. I bought this car because it was cheap. Sometimes when you buy a cheap car, you forget the reason why you actually bought a cheap car. And it's because you wanted to save money and not spend the extra amount on getting a good one. So what I'm trying to say is you wanna try and make improvements that are good bang for buck because otherwise it's gonna throw the whole point of you getting a cheap car out the window. So what I did with this car, for instance, is try and spend very, very little amounts of money or none at all to try and make it better in ways that I could. For instance, these cars have issues with pinion angles when you lower them. As you can see, it's quite low in the back. What happens is when you lower them, the diff, obviously a solid axle sitting like this. When you lower it, the pinion angle is gonna go up. And of course the tail shaft is directly connected to the pinion, to the diff at the back. It's gonna hit the body of the car, the floor. And I thought I was gonna to have to spend gazillions of dollars on adjustable arms and stuff like that. But luckily Ford, because they're smart, they put an adjustable in the live rear so you can adjust the pinion angle. And that costed me zero dollars and it improved the car exponentially. It drives so much better now. People say that when you're not in a clean environment, your brain's a little bit foggy, you know, you start to hate your surroundings and stuff like that. And that was the case with this thing. All I could see when I looked at the car was it was just a piece of junk. So cleaning the interior, you're going to spend 100% of the time in the car when you're driving it. So remember that. Okay, but when you're in the car, you don't want to be touching other people's human slime and stuff like that. It's not pleasant. And especially if you had rats living in the car, like this one here, that's also another reason. It's actually not good for your health, believe it or not. I hope this video has given you guys a bit of an insight of what it's like to buy and own a cheap Facebook marketplace car. All these tips that I've given, I found out the hard way for myself because if I knew them before, then all of this could have been avoided and I would have done things a little bit differently. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Stick around for the next video. More EF content coming. See you in the next one.